just before the um, lockdown came into being um, and we all got sent home from work and everything, um, we just managed to get a new band going with some uh, some gigs in the diary and we've done a few gigs um, and obviously you want to be um, uh, using some promotional stuff online to uh, make it easier to promote your stuff, put some videos on of live gigs and things like that or a demo video. So I spoke to an agent and she said, uh, put yourself a couple of videos online and I'll, I'll promote you to um, to venues, which I did. And then the uh, quarantine came into being, so all the pubs closed. But I did manage to get a couple of videos on there. And a, a friend of mine, Nick, Fishy Poor, um, who I've known without ever meeting for quite some time, just through YouTube, and he said um, he'd like to know a little bit more about my pedal board, <laughs> which pleases me greatly because um, I built my own pedal board um, for the last band that I was in, uh, much to the amusement of my bandmates. And I've been using it ever since. Uh, I basically went to a DIY do-it-yourself or a Chandler store, whatever you want to call it, bought some 3B2 wood and some 2B1 banged it together and that's been my pedal board ever since it's fallen apart a few times but the structure that I built hasn't and um, I tend to have um, a practical view of my use of effects rather than um, I don't really worry about having the best of the best uh, the Strymons of this world and Angry Charlies and that kind of thing I've tried some of that stuff um, and basically what I've found is that, <clears throat> particularly when you're playing gigs, people come over and look at your stuff, and or people come over with requests, with pint glasses in their hand, and lean over like this, and the pint glass goes all over your, um, all over your effects board. Um, the best one of those that, that I had was in a, a place in, in Liverpool called O'Neill's, um, three lads came up to me while I was setting up and were looking at me gear and were asking me about my amp and my guitar and whatever and um, they seemed fairly amused about my pedal board and asked me why I had um, certain effects that may or may not be considered um, top draw high quality <laughs> so I said the main issue is that uh, people spill their beer or their drinks into me into my stuff, which has happened a few times. Now there was three lads, um, and they were just standing there talking to me. I noticed they didn't have a drink between them. Uh, and then another lad approached behind them with a tray um, to talk to the. You know, he was he was bringing their 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 beer over. He just got the round, and he was the fourth member of their their um, their little community. And he walked right into the stage and dropped the tray onto me um onto me effects, which I think I managed to get away with it, except for me my uh, digital delay that night. So anyway, let's have a look. So this is my board as it is at the moment. Um as you can see, I've I've secured everything with um cable ties. So so this is the power supply, the mirror, this isn't attached to the board. Um, I intend on building a smaller, more compact um, board with a skateboard just for smaller gigs if we ever get around to gigging again. So, um, as I say, I've secured everything with cable ties. The, the digital delay needs, needs a different um, supply and I've got the um, extension on there which takes four sockets, it takes four plugs Got four sockets on there, um, so I can put me, uh, I can plug my amp into there, and everything's fairly close. Um, so there's a couple of interesting things on here. I think uh, everyone knows about the the OCD. I've had that for a few years. Uh, I really like the OCD. Um, it took me. I owned it for a few years. I put it through some serious wear and tear until somebody told me it wasn't a genuine OCD. Because you can tell because it's got the blue LED. So 
Um, I borrowed someone's OCD and I compared them and I didn't find much difference. Um, there definitely wasn't enough difference for me to worry about going to buy another one anyway. Um, I didn't pay very much for it as I remember so I wasn't too worried. So if I go from, from, the, from the right to, to left, um, we've got the cry baby. I don't know if you can see that on there. So I've uh, got the LED there on the on the bow on the um on the wah. So because I modified this this um it's a um crybaby wah, Dunlop crybaby wah. I think it's the only pedal that I, that I've always had on this board. I think so. Um, the thing is with this is I modified it myself. Um, there's a YouTube channel uh, called CS Guitars, Scottish fella called Colin, um, and it was one of the first guitar relate, related YouTube channels that I found. And one of his one of his early videos shows how to modify one of these. Um, and he showed you how to make it into a true bypass pedal. Um, uh, install the uh, LED so you can tell when it's on or off so I just need to click it and now you can see it's off and it's on and the little thing I did have a habit of leaving it switched on at one time so I did that um, okay so we've got the Joyo compressor uh, I tend to use that as a kind of boost for cleaner solos um, and that's about it really, it doesn't really get used very often as you can see it's still got the plastic on, I didn't notice that and the LCD as I said, the OCD I should say um, not a great deal to say about them, it's just, I just use it as a boost basically um, I find it nice and uh, responsive um, these, these knobs are really um, effective the only, the only issue with that is I, t I find that I, I quite often kick these two outside ones. Um, so the, the, the actual position of the, the, the pedal changes quite a lot. Um, depending on how much I've kicked it on the previous gig. So, next one along we've got the Tone Rider Chorus. You don't see many of them. I don't think they make them anymore. Uh, Tone Rider's more, more kind of famous for its uh it's it's for their um pickups this one's okay it's a standard standard kind of chorus really it sounds a lot like the boss chorus um uh, it was it was um i think i've got this on ebay and as you can see it's it's been there for for been there for years probably had this about uh, nine or ten years it's battered but it does the job um then we've got the the flange. I actually I've actually got the um, oh, what's it called? This is an Electromonics um, Neo Mistress. So I've actually got the Electric Mistress, the the original one from the from the the seventies with it with it, its actual um, I don't know what you call it power cord. Um, so you can actually plug it in. It doesn't have a, a separate power supply like all pedals do these days. Um, so I I did use that in a while. I've used it in the past gigging, um, but it's quite big. I'll probably I'll probably dig it out in a second. It's quite big, as I say. You have to plug it in, and uh, it's a really quality pedal. But um, this fits on the board, and that, for the amount of times I use a flanger, I can get away with this. This this electro uh, harmonics neo mistress. Um, then we got the the um, the Digitech digital delay um, I, I bought this because I've got the Boss DD2 um, which which was always on my pedal board and then um, it packed in one night so I, I had it repaired which a process that took a while for, for whatever reason I can't remember I had it repaired and, and while I was getting it repaired I bought this because I found this was um, pretty much or I thought it was pretty much the same thing which got a different sound quality and kind of a drier um, 
more direct. It's difficult to describe, obviously, trying to describe how things sound in comparison to another. And at first I didn't like it, and then I found when I put the, the Boss, the DD2 back on, I much preferred this. Having said that, I, 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 I then go back to the Boss and I think, oh, that, that's much better. But I'm sticking to this for the while because it's on there and it's uh, it's less of a uh, gamble to have it on your pedal board in a pub. And then we've got this. This is the um, the fuzz pedal. Uh, it's an absolute monster. <laughs> I very rarely step on this. Um, I th I'm worried about it blowing the amp because the the signal from this is is just absolutely insane. Um, you, you need to have the um, this knob here at the top quite low, otherwise all sorts of madness ensues. Um, and then this one's quite interesting. This is actually um, a homemade pedal, which um, it's a, it's a, an, an envelope filter, an auto wire, um, works quite well. I just I just saw it on. Um, I think it was on a face someone's Facebook page on sports out of curiosity just to see what it was like. And uh, I, I really quite liked it. So I put it on there. I, I was, I've always wanted to have a really good univibe and I've never quite found one. And the auto work does it does a nice kind of soft kind of tone psychedelic whatever you want to call it I don't, I don't know that that i quite like especially when you're playing funky stuff this is really good gives you gives you a, a nice bit of um whereas the cry baby um is just a straightforward wah. this this is this i mean obviously this is you know your classic kind of slash type solo and this is for your um classic funk type rhythm guitar playing um, and as I say, I've got the mirror. This is this power supply. I isolate the power supply, which is going to alternate between the, the, when I've got two boards. So you plug this in, power it up, and then you get a um, totally silent power supply because it's isolated, and it lasts. Um, actually, the last gig we did was in was in February, at the end of February before we went into isolation, um, and I, I haven't charged it since. And it's still got charge in there. Don't know if you can see those lights coming on. So that's amazing, really. Um, I've had a few different ones of these. This one seems to be the best so far. Um, this, this, obviously, this green light is go, so it means we're on. And this red light uh, gives you the, the the kind of rate of the. Um, the wah effect, if you like, uh, which is which is, you know, you can you can increase the rate by changing the uh, ten and the knobs. Um, that's about it, really. There's a there's a big pile of pedals that that come and go, um, depending on what kind of mood I'm in. So, uh, but this is the uh, this is the staple. This probably. Um, the wah, the OCD, and the chorus, and the digital delay, and the rest is kind of um, optional. Um, there are there are a host of other pedals that I that I've used, um, depending on what sort of mood I'm in. So I've got a fairly clean sound. This is my. Um, so this is my PV Encore amp, 65 watts. It's a kind of Mesa Boogie uh, imitation. Quite small, one one twelve in it, and uh, it's really loud. Okay, so I've got it set to clean. So this is the Crybaby. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
that's the crybaby with the OCD. <laughs> for solos um, which I like it's the pedal I don't use very often compressor A bit, a bit, a bit less um, dynamic, but easier for rhythm guitar on cleans. Uh, so I've got the chorus in conjunction with that. Then. So just hear the difference without the uh, compressor. Just lacks a bit of body, but it's okay. I should say on this guitar I've got the um, the push pull pots so that when they're up they're humbuck and when they're down they're single coil and um, gives a kind of um, really stratish type. type twang in the yeah uh, in the middle position when it's when they're both on single coil which I like um, this guitar is really versatile as a result okay so let's have a look at the um, envelope filter <laughs> with this one Extremes. <laughs> that was a fun. 
Okay, so I've already just looked at the chorus. I love this tone right the chorus. So whenever there's a clean section in the set, I tend I find myself standing on that quite a lot. <laughs> got the Digi Delay, the Digitech, kind of a workhorse pedal. I like this on, um, used to play, oh the Stereophonics. if your drummer can keep in time <laughs> and then we've got the um oh that i should should have mentioned that the, uh, on the digi delay we've got this setting for um, tape tape delay <laughs> can you hear the, uh, that, that kind of tape effect with the pitch the pitch changing Slightly sharper, as if the as if the the tape's a little bit worn out. So when, it, when it's on green you get close to that uh, electric mistress from you can like there. Too much. Uh. So, so these are some of the other pedals that come in and out. This is the DD2 I was talking about, uh, classic Boss DD2. Um, the thing I found about these, 
uh, the digital delay and the, and the, the Digitech is and there's a setting on both of these that gives you the kind of um, tape echo simulation where they basically add in hiss and a little bit of chorus so it sounds like it you know when the tape was going around in the olden days um, and it did get stretched so you 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 your echo would, would have a slight uh it would go flat and, and these these two pedals do the same thing but other than that the, the delay sounds quite clinical the digital delay so i've got one of these um you can spend a fortune on the delay pedal and i've, I've had various i really like this kind of dry sound you get from this joyo analog delay uh, but that, I think I should have that pedal on my board most of the time, really, because I do prefer the the drier kind of analog sound uh, more than the digital delay, actually. But these things are really quite uh, accurate when you're trying to find the right beat, assuming that the drummer can stay in time with the beat. Um. This thing is probably um, probably the most useful pedal you can buy. I I, I got hold of this because uh, someone I knew from years ago. Um, he said, I'm, "I don't know what to do with that." I said, "Well, how much do you want for it?" He said, "A tenner, ten pounds, about fifteen dollars, or maybe thirteen dollars." So I thought, "What's the worst that can happen?" And I actually used the graphic equaliser. This is a clone of the, the Boss equaliser. Uh, I tried the Boss one and it's just a little bit better in sound and quality than this one. Um, this was the first kind of pedal that I used as a boost that I liked. Because in, in the olden days, when I had um, an AC30 and a, and a Tube Screamer, there was no kind of boost pedal you just used the volume control so you kept the volume control about six or seven maybe and then when you wanted that boost for the solo you just turned the volume control up and then i thought well everyone's trying to boost pedal these days and, and, and i this was the first one i did Um it just colored the sound as soon as you as soon as you, you move the, the knobs there's a slight coloration um, which I, I, I suspect uh, is is something that you, you, you almost you know you can't you can't get around that. But um, I feel that the graphic equaliser should be totally transparent. Maybe one day I'll go for a more expensive one. This thing's fabulous. This is another Behringer. I, I I can't I can't understand why Behringer's so um they're, they're really good quality nice solid pedals and um, this the, the ultra shift harmonist um, does all sorts of things to the point where you don't know what you want to do with it anymore and I tried using it for um the harmon for the harmony parts on on some of the queen solos that we used to do queen for the queen songs um well, you've got to be really careful about using some artificial harmony like that, I think. <laughs> Speaking from experience, Ditto Looper, everyone knows about them. Hardly gets used. They were a great idea when they came out, but then there's only so much you can do with them. Um, Digitech Bad Monkey. I got this really cheap one from um, GAC. Guitar amp and keyboards. And I think what it was is that most of the Bad Monkeys... Um, it's just a it's just a tube screamer clone. Well, this one's got um, a little bit more flexibility with the four knobs. And I think they made a batch with 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 um, a slightly uh, there's a chip in there that's not quite right because it, it sounds fabulous. It gives you the real kind of Marshall overdrive, but this particular one doesn't actually boost. It just uh, it's just it's almost it's almost an um, I don't know 
it's just a, it's just it's just like it takes me back to the situation I had with it when it was just a tube screamer and the AC30. So, um, but I do like this one. I prefer that OCD. This dual pedal that's covered in dust. This is um, it's another pedal I bought from um, just out of sheer curiosity. Uh, it's it's a uh, it's a dual OCD pedal. It's somebody built this, and it's absolutely. I mean, it's it's as high quality as as, as any pedal I've ever I've ever bought in terms of the, the you know the construction. Um, so I mean, you, you click on one one side of the pedal, and you get some dirt or a boost, depending on how you want to use it. Click on the other side, and you just get sheer filth. Um, I mean, probably that's gonna do a lot. It does sound really good. It sounds sounds as good as the OCD. I don't know if the components are as, as high quality as that, but uh, having said that, as I say, this this OCD is a clone pedal. I think I bought that on eBay. That OCD, um, and at the time I thought it was a real bargain, but it's not the actual one; it's the clone. Such is life. Um, then we've got this. It's Muir Pitch Box. It's a fabulous pedal. This, um, it gives you it's kind of an, an octave, um, but it, it also does harmonies, a pitch shifting thing, uh, and it can it can detune. So you when you want to go to that drop D type of thing, um, or whatever, it does that. Again, with these kind of artificial harmony pedals, you have to be really careful. <laughs> um, and then the last one I could find today, Dan Electro Cool Cat, and this is a uh, this is a Univibe. I love the Univibe pedal. Um, it's not it's not the most highbrow of uh, models on the market, this, but it's really durable and it works. The problem I found with that Dan Electro is that when you step on it, you get a kind of instant boost um, almost like a fuzz for about two seconds uh, when it really really boosts your signal and then it and then it settles down into a normal univibe setting which is difficult to use live because it kind of it kind of robs you of your uh, projection in the in the mix uh, which is problem I find with, with most Univibes. I prefer the, the auto wire or the, the envelope filter. Um, well, there's a bit of a selection of pedals. So, as I say, the staple is the wire, the boost, or the OCD in this case, um, the chorus and the delay. And all the others are kind of um, add a bit of spice from now and again. There's um, a Joyo pedal that I bought when the OCD um, was was uh, damaged because someone dropped some zinc on my board. This one I had to get it repaired, and I bought um, the Joyo pedal, and the Ultimate Overdrive, which is um, a clone of the OCD. And uh, <laughs> I mean, something like thirty pounds, thirty thirty English pounds. Maybe I don't know forty dollars something like that, and it was as good. Um, probably prefer it to be honest. Maybe it's a kind of a uh, bit of snobbishness on my part to have something that looks like an OCD on my board. Uh, it's as much as I can think of for now. So there you go. That's my pedal board. If you want, if you want to, uh, if you want to build one, get yourself some rubber feet, um, some two B one 
well, it's called 2 by one because it's 2 inches by 1. Uh, and this is 3 by 2 3 inches by 2 Probably 3 by 2 is a little bit thick. There's the 3 by 2 there. And those, that one going across, that's a 2 by 1 And uh, it's just, I have bolted it all together. And painted it silver. Uh, got some some velcro to hold them down with. I've used various different methods to uh, hold the pedals down with. So now they at the moment there's velcro. Uh, there's a thing called 3M which I've used as well, which is really good. There's actually some on here, just a plastic kind of um, velcro that's a lot stronger. And then obviously I've held them on with cable ties. And I've velcroed on this um, extension. Uh, it makes life a lot easier in, in, in setting up for gigs and whatever. So there you go, that's my pedal board.